Welcome back to AskHenryHatsworth.tumblr.com. <laughs> and today, we will be conquering the puzzle realm. They had a Tumblr too? Oh, I wish. All right, we've maxed out our projectile damage. Now we're gonna get the third silver heart. And the fourth is gonna be 9,999 gems. Break out that credit card, boys. <laughs> These are just extortionate prices at this point, oh Cole. What are you God. doing? Please tell me that's the last heart. It is the last silver heart, yes. Okay. Anyway, welcome to the puzzle realm. For real this time. <laughs> <laughs> and we got these uh we got these blocks here and they they're going to be the the main uh the main puzzle blocks are going to be the big gimmick of this level also infinite clown car spawning areas because of course uh, all the enemies yep uh, we saw some of those earlier, I think, in World 2, if I remember correctly. Uh, but these ones actually spawn regular enemies. I also like how that one guy dashed into the bottomless pit. <laughs> there are there are so many bottomless pits in this level that they the AI is very aggressive, uh, often to do its detriment. I mean, sometimes it's just like spit out a slime that's also kind of a lemming. Yep. So as you may have noticed earlier, uh, if you match three of the puzzle blocks on the top screen, they will solve, uh, just like on the bottom. And then disappear. Yes. They disappear and becomes a disappearing platform. Yep, and uh, if you didn't have that little grace period, you would have eaten shit there. Yep. I don't think that you could just cheese things either by, you know, standing on one platform or one block. Uh, because if you do that, the game will just cycle through the different colors. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it accommodates for that. I really like how cruel the level placement is. I do appreciate whenever video games, uh, like, incorporate puzzle game mechanics into their, uh, main, uh, game loop. Uh, another example I have of this is in the Mario Luigi games. I think specifically Superstar Saga and Dream Team. Sometimes you can fight the Mario or the Dr. Mario viruses. And if you match colors there, uh, you clear the viruses without having to actually drain their HP instead. Oh, I didn't know we were allowed to recycle references in this take. I mean, it, <laughs> it's it, our... it, <laughs> whoops. That's we, okay. I mean, it's, it's relevant. I, I had an internet connection loss uh, halfway through the last take. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're doing this again. We, we actually made it further into the level than Tem did. <laughs> I'll probably include the, uh, the the moment of crisis at the end, because uh, it was pretty funny when it happened. Boring one out for, uh, for take A. <laughs> Although, funnily enough, uh, it's actually never happened to us before. Uh, although I hear it happens to a lot of Let's Players. Yeah, I was going to say, speak for yourself. This happens to me a lot. <laughs> I, I think it happens to approximately one in three Let's Players, from what I hear. Hey, there's three of us here. <laughs> and it hasn't happened to me in a while, actually. <laughs> yeah, somehow I have managed to go through, you know, several YouTube-only Let's Plays and then several others through something awful at LP Beach without having a take interrupted by uh, internet loss until now. So, you know, first, first time for everything. And while we're repeating old content for the previous take, I might as well point <laughs> out that uh, the the pre the uh, the bonus rooms really are you know a great respite from the action at this point, especially in this world. So this room is a bit of a, an odd one. Uh, it does have the infinitely respawning enemies, or I should say, these crystals do, and you have to destroy them. Uh, otherwise, the battle will never end. Of course, those crystals spawn the keys that drop bombs, and the bombs will destroy the blocks. So there's a lot to uh, keep track of. I'm still trying to decide if this is good level design or sadistic level design or both. Yes. Okay. 
Honestly, I just kind of, at this point, I just kind of think these arena fights are kind of lazy. Yeah, eventually, starting around World 5, I will start uh, trimming the length of the arena fights. Um, it really didn't occur, occur for me to do so until a little later in my editing. I have edited, fully edited, almost everything. There's one update that I have yet to do. Uh, that's just the final one. Around World 5, I started cutting down, basically, unless something interesting or uniquely funny happened or was introducing something new, uh, I, I cut it out. Just for the arena fights, though. All the platforming, no matter how tedious it was, I kept it in. <laughs> At this point, I did not know when to trust the camera when it came to finding secrets. I think the difficulty curve has kind of trained you in that regard. Yeah, th there is no end in sight to the difficulty curve at all. And that right there is a great example of uh, the, the anti-cheese protocol, where if you stand in one spot, we'll just cycle through the various colors. I think you might be able to get away with just, uh... Wait, does it only cycle through the block you're standing on? Yes, it only cycles through whatever block you're standing on. If you got two blocks that are mismatched, and you just stand on the third block, it'll never solve then, right? It will eventually solve. If it's green, red, green, and you stand on the red one, eventually it'll come around to green. No, no, but if you stand on one of the green ones... Yeah. It'll never solve in that game, right? It's not a perfect system, but it's still meant to discourage waiting. Right, but it seems like there's a pretty easy way to game that. Yeah, well... You know, nothing's perfect. And speaking of things that aren't perfect, uh, let's have a look at these doors. This is definitely, I think, the worst part of World 4 uh, in terms of design. Because, uh, I mean, I got pretty lucky on this take, but uh, you can see that it, it could be really nasty uh, trying to line up these doors to match the colors. Yeah, uh, to recycle another point of comparison from uh, take A, this reminds me a lot of the casino in Super Mario Sunshine, where you gotta open the way to a secret level by spraying, like, a 4x4 grid of panels so that they all they all flip over and reveal a giant sprite, but because the only way you can, uh, you know, interact with a thing is by spraying the flood, which is a water cannon, you're hitting, like, every, every tile, and it, it's horrible, I hate it. Yeah, that was in the hotel, right? I don't remember the name. Uh... Why don't I remember the name either? I... To the hotel that's haunted by booze? Yeah. I'm gonna look it up. I'm pretty sure the tedium of that part alone was what helped to encourage the uh, discovery of an out of bounds trick to skip it. Okay, the hotel's name is Hotel Delfino. That's what, exactly what I thought it was. But the only reason I got confused was because the area is named Serena Beach, and that's what I couldn't remember. Ah. Delfino is a great name. Someone should name an island after it. <laughs> I would try to Google that, but I'm pretty sure I would only find Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> also, what the hell, level designers? You've got pokies on these very narrow platforms. And uh, I, I hate to inform you guys, but there are palette-swapped versions of pokies with more damage and more health. Oh, no! <laughs> It happens with almost every enemy. These wouldn't be so bad if, like, you know, literally every enemy weren't a damage sponge. I mean, the, the, the enemies kind of have to be damage sponges in a way, because juggling enemies and, and keeping track of crowd control is such a huge part of this game's combat. Sure, but I don't think they need to be damage sponges for it. Like, you could just hit one and then start juggling. Like, just ha I, I don't I don't know, like, when the basic enemies take, like, two or three hits, I feel like something's, uh, something needs to be rebalanced there. Keep that in mind once you, uh, see a bit of footage from the New Game Plus difficulty. Uh... Because that is so much worse. I'm, I'm not going to be showing that much from, uh, from Gentleman Mode, but enough to show you how much it sucks and why I don't like it. 
Is it like when uh, Super Mario Brothers swapped out Goombas for Buzzy Beetles for hard mode? It does. There's no actual changes in enemy placement. Um, it's just certain values change. But it, it's more than just the typical enemies do more damage, although they do that as well. I, I do like how this level, uh, as well as being incredibly cruel, also really encourages you to use your dash by having platforms that are much further apart than they were in World 3. He says, well, he does not use the dash. <laughs> yeah, you don't dash nearly enough uh, now that you have it. Well, yeah, it's the the dash is actually quite useful in combat as a way of, you know, playing keep away. Do you get any ice cream while dashing? No. Damn. I mean, there there is no real, I mean, the invincibility is really only a thing for the special attacks. And even then, it's just for uh, the P-Sure and the bombs. You get a very, very short window of invincibility with the boomerang, and that's only just before the um, uh, the boomerang shield appears. Ooh, nice juggle. Thanks. I worked hard on that juggle. Put heart and soul into it. Spent hours in the oven. <laughs> they don't make juggles like they used to. say the level is quite lovely even if it is sadistic i also like how all of the uh the the clouds of the stars are on strings like it's some sort of stage show oh, yeah. it has a charm to it even when it's brutalizing you it's also fairly accurate to what we saw in the prologue in terms of how the uh, the puzzle realm looks. Like you you saw those those fake stars and clouds there as well. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, tea time, motherfucker! <laughs> Everyone's favorite mech. Henry getting the robot. Damn it! <laughs> I wanted to make that joke. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a missile. I totally forgot. How do you just forget about your missile? There are so many other cool things that the robot could do. If you just forget about the, the little things. Where are, you, where are you going? I thought there was a secret back there for some reason. More to the point, I have no idea why I kept that in. <laughs> oh, also you keep the robot if you hit the if you hit the chest with it. I'm glad they did that. The robot is probably my favorite part of this so far. Like, that's, that's really difficult for me to say, especially after Lance and the captain, but the robot. I mean, the robot's always on hand. Like, you just gotta have enough meter to summon it, and there you go. But, you know, Lance, like, he he, he was on, around for one one boss fight. Technically more than that, but we I think we only really saw him for the one boss fight. Yeah. I also really like this track. It's such a blatant pastiche of Benny Goodman's Hooray for Hollywood. In fact, in the, in the soundtrack, it's even called Hooray for Puzzle Realm. You guys have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? I, 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 I've heard Hooray for Hollywood before. Yeah, it used yeah, to show up to... in the Oscars all the time, like in the 80s and 90s. This sounds like a version they would play on uh, Tiny Toon Adventures or something. Yeah, when they couldn't afford the license for, for the Betty Cupid original, they had to make something really close. 
Oh, by the way, those uh, those gems are ice physics. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Everybody's favorite. Oh, no traction. Yeah. On the plus side, it allows you to move while using the bomb special, which is nice. Oh, by the way, those gems, uh, the, the vertically the vertically moving ones, uh, if you get moved up to the top of the screen, uh, that's instant death. Oh. Of course. Huh. Okay. I do appreciate the traction on the ice, if only because it allows you to move while using the bomb special. Pretty much the only reason. Ooh, oh, cut. Jesus Christ. Ah! Cutting yeah, you real have, close there. Yeah, you have a very slight window uh, to get out of the way before you die. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I clenched a little. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to remember, I think this is the introduction of a new enemy here. Yes. Oh, God. This is the Skull Ballerina. One of the most feared enemies for what? anyone who's played this game. It is terrifying. It does a pretty decent amount of damage. It's fast, it's mobile, it will follow you. Uh, it has a very hard to avoid attack with its spinning claws that does, it only does a, a one and a half hearts of damage, but uh, it's very fast. And in groups, uh, they are a total nightmare. Really good job on the sound design for it. Yeah, like that's it, it, it is. It's really great to see that every enemy has a very distinct tell uh, when they arrive. Like all of their attacks sound different, uh, which is very hard to do, and it also very important uh, when you're dealing with you know a brawler of any kind, but especially a 2D one. And of course, when they die, they turn into skull blocks. Of course they do. I also realized I didn't really get a chance to show off what the swamp blocks do uh, when they reach the uh, top screen. So here we go. Oh wait, never mind. I forgot I accidentally solved it. Huh? But here comes another. So this is going to turn into like an impromptu demonstration of what some of the weirder blocks do. I don't think I was really planning for this. So the Swamp Block uh, kind of chases you like an evil Pac-Man. Uh, it will chase you on the horizontal plane only. And it has more HP, as you would expect. And then it becomes a normal Swamp. Yeah, then it becomes a normal one. Uh, the Skull Block will home in on you. I think it was at this point I just decided to make this an impromptu showcase. So this is the, the key uh, Skull Block. Uh, it will shoot acid at you. What? Durr. Ooh, no. It slows down your movement, and I believe it also reverses your controls. I can't remember exactly. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, the skull block will home in on you once and then run away. Now, it's also worth noting that uh, in order to keep things a little more under control, uh, the enemy blocks only appear one at a time, even if there are several lined up. That's for the best, because I can imagine people getting into yeah. like, real nasty stuff with like five blocks uh, clambering up to the top. Yeah, e even in gentleman mode, they only appear one at a time. Man, those that bomb just skidded up across this... Uh, Blue gem. Yep, that's what Slippery Traction does. And you, you can also use bombs to uh, help with comboing enemies that are already dead. It's a lot easier to do that with than with the other melee weapons. And how would you like to see some more platforming? 
with the ice traction. Oh, yeah. And block wide platforming with the ice traction. Oh, I am loving this. Just round of applause for the uh, for the uh, for the sadism of the level designers here. Just wow. And we're we're really just getting started. Oh, and by the way, uh, instant crush gems uh, combining with the ice traction. This is the first time we've seen uh, the instant death crushers, at least in this context. And of course, why not throw in the swamps? <laughs> oh boy. Do you get crushed if you're ducking below one of yeah, these things? Yeah, you get crushed if you you get crushed if you stop ducking. Okay. Got to sneak in there. Amazing. What, what about if just a little through like the top? Of, okay, never mind. You're fine. Yeah, like it's not like it's a, a it's not like it's a death plate if you hit the bottom there. It's you have to be specifically crushed. This took a while. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that that that's kind of mean. Yeah, at least you can use the traction of the dash to slide through. It feels like you have to do it like that. Or just get a running start. I guess. And there's actually a secret up there. I wouldn't put it past this game to hide something up there. And of course, an exploding slime, because why not at this point? Why not? Yeah, let's just throw that in there. Oh, we haven't even seen the half of it yet. Mario Maker, eat your heart out. Okay, uh, Henry Hatsworth Maker for the Switch. Uh, the Nintendo Direct just came out earlier today. They really had a missed opportunity. <laughs> I was disappointed they introduced the new Smash character, and I don't even remember who it was because it wasn't Henry. <laughs> I was actually legitimately excited for the Smash character, so... <laughs> well, yeah, of course. You've already put, like, God knows how many hours into your Xenoblade LPs. Of course you will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. It's this one. Joy. I'm sure I was very pleased to get this at the time because I didn't have to focus on the game. I mean, there's, there is a line between pastiche and plagiarism at some point, you gotta think. Uh, it depends on how many times the level music repeats. And how many times the composer, uh, does it, I guess? Like, uh... I mean, this is this is the only time it's ever this blatant. Right, right. Uh, but there's a pretty, pretty, uh, famous example from, uh, uh, Dragon Ball, where one of the... Uh, one of the composers who's worked on the series for a really long time was, uh, fired after because they realized he'd been plagiarizing a lot of this shit. Then, of course, there's the, the Allenson brothers, who just straight up bit crushed a Shadow of the Colossus song for two brothers. Wait, really? Yeah. That's why it got taken off the Steam store. Amazing. Oh, and speaking of crushing, uh, yeah, they, they start doing this with the gems. Huh. Yeah, that looks like it'd crush your bits. But where are the gems going? Uh, I assume it's like some sort of Dahir Inshot style, really inconvenient conveyor belt system <laughs> that loops them back. <laughs> oh man, I need the I need the gems ma uh, that make up the uh, quadcopter right now. <laughs> okay, so we have we have to assume that in this universe, the gentleman uh, was a co-founder of Dahir Inshot. Uh, he's 
to this to this day he's still trapped in his earthquake bed. <laughs> So that's where you put all the pieces of uh, the gentleman's suit. All right, we need. <laughs> where was the last known sighting of the the earthquake bed? Uh, I, I, it was somewhere in the uh, in one of those Russian greenhouses that they that they proposed to Vladimir Putin. <laughs> in English, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, someone contact High Tuesday. We need to know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> also, you, you have to go in this cubby hole, otherwise you will die. Uh, there's not enough room to get in a, a one cycle. Unless Judge Fish contradicts me somehow in the comments and figures it out, but... Uh, there, there is some obscure speedrun trick, I yeah. guarantee it. Speaking speaking of obscure speedrunning tricks, apparently recently there was a way uh, to clip through the ground using a one-frame window uh, to get a, a heart block uh, solved in the puzzle realm and then activate tea time. Huh. I'm I'm sure I'm sure there's a better way to explain it, but it's yeah basically it's a way to skip some parts of of levels. It's pretty cool. Well, that marathon lasted a while, and we're only one third of the way through World Four. Oh boy! <laughs> what is this game doing to us? Uh, whatever it is, uh, don't stop. No. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I just realized I completely forgot to talk about the two things I wanted to. So that'll have to be a next video. Uh, <laughs> I guess our plans got derailed because of the failed take. Uh, segwaying into that, uh, I, I'm going to put the, uh, the the moment of the failed take right about here uh, as an extra uh, an extra <laughs> bonus for all of our wonderful viewers. So please enjoy that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have fun, guys. Uh, that reminds me of that very brief period uh, after the first Mario Maker came out where there was a, a surge in content of game designers uh, showing off their uh, their Mario Maker levels. Oh, like Tim Schafer yeah. did it. I know a couple other people did as well. Oh, do we have connection issues there? Nope. No? I guess oh, I okay. Well, oh, no, you're back. I'm, this is going to be interesting. I think the puzzle realm is interfering with our uh, with our Discord call. Hmm. This will be interesting. I, I assume that we will all individually make jokes and then somehow in post, I'll stitch it all together. All right. Who's this will be fun. Who, who's on bottom screen duty? Uh, I'm got it. going to keep this take. Let's all make jokes and hope it works. The, the hilarious thing is, we can both hear him, but he can't hear us, right? Yeah, I can hear him just oh. fine. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of flickies over here. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Hmm. Well, if, okay. this, this, the, if this audio stays in, Tem, uh, Tem has just lost internet. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's... This is going to be interesting, guys, because we are not Henry Hatsworth experts. Yeah, all I can say is, uh, all these pokies on super narrow platforms look like a major pain in the ass. Honestly, I think I would have been tired of them by this point. Like, no. you guys made your point, like, two or three pokies ago. Oh, God, I hope he brings out the mech before the end of this. Oh, man, I am ready for tea time. Oh, I guess we're not keeping this take after all. Uh, Speak for yourself. I'm keeping this take. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm, Holy uh, shit, he's back. Oh, hi. Maybe we should keep this take. I don't know anymore. What is Mike's name? Uh, yes, there's a big red microphone icon on your, uh, on your face there, Ten. I mean, I'm just going to keep rolling until it's told otherwise, Ben, I guess. Yeah, I just paused <laughs> the video, so now we have a problem. Okay, fuck. <laughs> Fine, I'll pause. Well, this is this is where the tape runs out, so we're just gonna keep recording B-roll until the mic gets worked out. <laughs>